some pressure on his joints now and just see if I can trigger or bring that reflex back. So I'm kind of pushing on his hips right now. I'm pushing on his low back. And when I push on his low back, his right leg got two inches short. So we're going to adjust L4. And that's right above his herniated disc of 30 years ago now, so that's all well and sclerosed and thinned down and probably getting to a natural point of even some fusion um, with time. So now when I put pressure on that L4 vertebra, nothing happens. His feet stay even. So that's how I know my little thumper here, the, the Arthur stem, which I just demonstrated, I didn't adjust, um, actually moved the bone off the nerve because that reflex went away. And again, if you visit the website, for those of you that do the internet, uh, you can see videos on this whole procedure and you see the person's leg get laid, uh, long and short. So the other way I can challenge the body and try to see if this reflex is around is by having the patient move. So, Joe, put your right hand behind your back. When you move, you put pressure on bones and nerves. If those bones and nerves are normal, nothing happens. Put both hands behind your back. Now, as Joe is moving here, his feet are staying even. They're normal. In other words, nothing looks short. Put your hands down, Joe. Now, when he put his hands down on the table from being behind his back, his right leg got about an inch short. That's a positive reflex for the L1 vertebra, or nerve interference. We call that a facilitated segment. So, we just did an adjustment around L1. Now, L1 happens to control your kidneys. It affects your bladder reproductive system, as well as the muscles in the upper low back. So Joe, put your right hand above your head. So now he's just putting it on the table. Nothing happened. That's good. That's normal. His feet stayed even. Arm down. Put both hands above your head from the top. Nothing's happening. That's normal. Hands down. Turn your head to the right. Now we're up in the middle back or the dorsal spine, the thoracic spine. Nothing's happening. The feet are staying even, so that's a good thing. Right hand above your head again, Joe. When the head's turned, it kind of accents the upper back. His leg got a little short. Now, I know Joe has a little neuropathy, a little numbness in his hand, especially his right hand from being in the booth and working computers and mouses uh, on the computer stuff all these years. So, arm down. Feet are even. Shrug your shoulders for me, Joe. Rest. Head in the middle. Now his face is just centered, it's not to the right anymore, and nothing's happening. So that's good. So now we're into the neck. Look up, head down. Ooh, got real short. When he picked his head up, his uh, right leg got real short. That's a C5 positive test, and C5 is a classic one for um, hand and shoulder issues. When we're talking about numbness and tingling in the fingers, like with uh, neuropathy. Look up again. Head down, and we did the adjustment. You might have heard a little tap in the background. Now nothing happens. His feet stayed even. So that's how I know that this instrument, the Arthur stem, actually pushed the bone off the nerve or adjusted the subluxation. Tuck your chin to your chest for me, Joe. Relax. Nothing. That's an upper cervical test. Push your face into the table just a little bit. Relax. And when he pushed into the table, it kind of makes the skull push back onto the neck. And that caused his reflex to come back. So that means the occiput, or the base of the skull, is kind of squished down on the neck. Again, cervical alignment is what we're kind of addressing right here. So now I'm going to kind of go through and just kind of feel what's going on with my hands. For all you folks in Radio Land, you'll just have to take my word for it or what I'm doing. Or go to the YouTube channel and look at the video. Yeah, you can go to the YouTube channel and see Joe here on the table. You'll see me standing over him. i got my headphones on so I can hear the radio broadcast at the same time. And I'm just kind of feeling with my hands for what's going on. In the office, I might do a lot of what's called myofascial or active release technique, ART, and some trigger point kind of stuff. Um, and for people that have injuries, we even do like cold laser therapy, which enhances healing and uh, nerve regeneration. So. At the moment, I think we've got Joe pretty straight. And not that he was in any serious pain or having a symptom, aside from his occasional numbness in his hand. But uh, So at the moment, he's doing pretty good. How are you doing down there, Joe? I feel fine. That, uh, it's an interesting feeling. Very good, very good. And now we're in this tiny room, which you just have to see on YouTube. Uh, Joe, I'm going to ask you to stand up over here. And just kind of, uh, you know, kind of shake it off a little bit. 
Move your head around a little. Very good, very good. Um, how do you feel now as compared to before you laid on the table? Not that you're having pain, do you feel looser, taller, uh, less tense? I feel a little looser. There you go. And really, for a guy who's not having a symptom or in pain, that's about all I would expect. There's not going to be any kind of you know, parting of the waters or uh, really tough stuff here that he's going to go, wow, I'm healed. But, uh, you know, his complaint is uh, numbness in the fingers. How the fingers? Not, were they bothering you today at all? No, they were, it's usually when I work the mouse in the studio for more than 10 or 15 minutes, I'll start to get numbness below the elbow. Below the elbow. So, again, the other thing I'm going to do here, maybe hopefully Kristen will get it on the, the video. Relax your elbow. We're going to do a manual adjustment of Joe's wrist because he does so much work on the computer. And you just have to take my hand for it. I'm kind of like shaking his wrist around, moving his hand, pulling on his fingers a little bit. And uh, we're going to work on the elbow. And just kind of, because that goes with wrist and uh, neck kind of trouble. And he had a little bit of some fixations. The carpal bones, which I talked about on the Carpal Tunnel Show uh, last week, were jammed up a little bit. And now they feel like they're moving. I'm kind of just doing this motion where my thumbs are pushing and I'm moving his wrist around in all these different directions to see how the motion feels of the individual joints in the hand. And after the little bit of, because I used my hands, that did make a snap, crackle, pop. Um, it feels much better now. And we'll even kind of look at the, the good side, the left side that doesn't do all the computer work. And there we go. Nice little snap, crackle, pop in that wrist of the lunate bone. And the elbow is pretty good. Turn those fingers a little bit. Just a little bit still left in that wrist. There we go. And that just kind of clicked right in place. I mean, Joel will probably tell us about how it kind of like a little popping feeling in his wrist there a little. <laughs> but the idea is now the wrist is limber, those carpal tunnel bones that we talked about last week, they're not dropping down into that tunnel to put pressure on the nerve, the artery, uh, the vein, and the tissue in there in that uh, they're moving normally, so therefore the inflammation, if there was any inflammation, goes away. So that's kind of let me, let me ask you, Doc, um, you know, is this the normal length? I mean, that uh, that didn't take very long. Is that kind of the normal length for somebody to get a chiropractic uh, uh, adjustment, or is that just kind of a quickie because we're in a tight space? And no, that's, uh, that's really pretty much what a, an adjustment in my visit. If you have a lot more, if you have soft tissue issues, you might have trigger points or knots up here in your shoulders. You might have some sore muscles down in the back or down in the hips or your glutes. So I, I might spend like another 10 minutes doing some deep tissue massage, if you will, or myofascial work and uh, some ART or there's some other techniques we do for injuries and, and what we call uh, muscle strengthening uh, at the neurological level, basically getting the, the neuron to just kind of fire the muscle up a little quicker than uh, doing stretches or yoga on your own could do. So but that was about the normal length. Take a break and yeah, we'll so. come back. We'll we'll put the table away then and Dr. D will be back after this. Sounds good.